Mitochondrial dysfunction is a hallmark of aging, and we can see that mitochondrial dysfunction is included as one of the 12 hallmarks. With that in mind, outside of a muscle biopsy, can we evaluate mitochondrial function? So in today's video, we'll see that circulating levels of acyl carnitines can be used as an index of mitochondrial function. So first, what are acyl carnitines? So the simple definition is that they are fatty acids bound to carnitine, and we can see that represented here. Now there are many different acyl carnitines, short chain, medium chain, dicarboxyl, etc. Just to illustrate one of them, we'll go to the long chain AC, acyl carnitine group, and I've circled the carnitine part of the acyl carnitine, and then that's bound in this case to palmitate, the six, C16, 16 carbon fatty acid FA, palmitate, and then together that makes palmitoyl carnitine. Now I mentioned circulating levels of acyl carnitines can be used as an index of mitochondrial function, so why is that? Within the mitochondria, if there is a, an, a, bl a blockage to beta oxidation, that leads to an accumulation of acyl carnitines, but also fatty acids, which together contribute to lipotoxicity in tissues such as the heart, liver, skeletal muscle, and brain. And then lipotoxicity, that lipotoxicity as induced by acyl carnitines and fatty acids, induces an alteration in mitochondrial morphology, so alterations in size and shape, bioenergetic dysfunction, so a decreased ability to make ATP, induction of the permeability transition pore, the mitochondrial permeability transition pore, so more stuff leaking in and out of mitochondria, and it induces oxidative stress. So with that in mind, which acyl carnitines are related to health and aging? And potentially more, important, more importantly, can we track and optimize acyl carnitines? So let's get into the data. So first, acyl carnitines are associated with an increased incident risk for having a major cardiovascular event. And major adverse cardiovascular events, or MACE, were defined as having a non-fatal stroke or myocardial infarction, so stroke or a heart attack that didn't kill the person, peripheral vascular surgical procedures, and cardiovascular death. And then in this study, they used principal component analysis on 49 metabolites, which grouped the metabolites, statistically grouped the metabolites, into seven principal component containing factors. And then in a study of 85 year old, 85 year olds, which metabolite containing factors were associated with having a major adverse cardiovascular event 3.5 years later? And that's what we can see here. So first we've got the HR hazard ratio. Next to that, we've got the 95% confidence interval. And remember that when the data in parentheses is completely above one or below one, we have a significant association. And that's true for the two of the seven principal component or metabolite containing factors. The first would be factor seven, which with a 2.18 uh, hazard ratio, so a almost doubling of the risk for having a major cardiovascular event. If, uh, and that's in association with factor seven, which contained primarily the amino acid alanine, ALA. But this is an acyl carnitine focused video, so you can guess what was also associated with having a major cardiovascular event. And that was factor one, which had, there, there was a 77% increased risk of having a major cardiovascular event for relatively higher levels of the metabolites that were found in factor one, which were medium and long chain acyl carnitines, C2, C6, C8, those fatty acids bound to carnitine. Now I should mention just to, just to nitpick, they, the authors of this study defined that group as medium and long chain acyl carnitines, but C2 or acetyl carnitine, C6, hexanoyl carnitine, these are short chain fatty acids. So technically that group description should be short, medium, and long chain acyl carnitines, and one could even get more nitpicky and say that they, they include unsaturated uh, acyl carnitines too. The 14-1, 12-1, those are unsat unsaturated fatty acid containing uh, acyl carnitines. All right, so acyl carnitines are also higher in Alzheimer's disease patients when compared with healthy, healthy controls, and that's what we can see here. So we've got eight different acyl carnitines, and these data are in controls and Alzheimer's disease patients, AD, and for each of these uh, circulating uh, acyl carnitines, these are plasma levels of acyl carnitines, we can see that each was significantly higher in the AD patients when compared with healthy controls. Now note that almost all of these acyl carnitines were also higher uh, associated with having a higher uh, uh, MACE risk for having a higher risk of having a major cardiovascular event, and that's without, with the exception of the C18 acyl carnitine. So the other seven in this study were also associated with having a, a higher risk of having a major cardiovascular event. And that's potentially important because replication across studies suggests that these specific acyl carnitines may be related to poor health. So some of these acyl carnitines are also associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. 
And that's what we can see in this paper, the association between plasma metabolites and future risk of all-cause mortality. And I should mention that all of the papers mentioned in the video will be in the video's description. So if you're interested in uh, checking out the paper for yourself, it'll be in the video's description. All right, so then in this study, they identified three acyl carnitines on the left, C14, C16, and C18, the unsaturated versions of those fatty acids, in association with all-cause mortality risk. Now, this study included two different studies, so an internal replication. The first included uh, the MDC-CC study, which had about 3,800 people, an average age of 58 years, and then a 22-year follow-up. So starting with the initial assessment of metabolite levels, how was that associated with all-cause mortality risk 22 years later? And then the findings for that study were replicated or attempted for replication in the MPP re-examination study, which included a smaller sample size of, of about 1,500 people. They had an average age of seven years and an 11-year follow-up. And then we put a red line at that hazard ratio of zero, and we can see that for each of these three acyl carnitines, they were significantly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk for both studies, thereby highlighting or potentially highlighting their importance as markers of poor health, especially when considering that they were associated with having a major adverse cardiovascular event too. So how did these acyl carnitines, the ones that were associated with having a cardiovascular event, uh, are higher in Alzheimer's disease patients and all-cause mortality, how do they change during aging? And that's potentially important because are these acyl carnitines markers of just a pathological state or do they also increase during aging? Which, if that's the case, then the age-related changes are potentially related to the underlying path uh, pathology that's related to uh, uh, having a major cardiovascular event and or Alzheimer's disease. So first, in terms of age-related changes, let's take a look at one of the three that's above there, the C181. Uh, carnitine, and these are age-related changes within the 45 to 85-year age range. And for both studies, the MDC-CC and the MPP re-examination, we can see that there was a, uh, an increase for the C181 acyl carnitine, incre increase during aging. All right, so what about the uh, other acyl carnitines? How do they change during aging? And that's what we see here. We've got 14 acyl carnitines that were associated with having a cardiovascular event, Alzheimer's disease, or all-cause mortality on the left, and then we've got data for people that had an average age of 97 years, almost close to centenarian status. You know, so you've got to be older than 100 to be a centenarian or de defined as a centenarian. Their offspring plus spouses with an average age of 67 years. And then when analyzing these data, only one was not measured. And that's the C18-1, which I just highlighted, increases during aging from the 45 to 85-year age range. Unfortunately, in this study, it wasn't measured, though. And then of the 14 acyl carnitines on this list, only one wasn't significantly higher in the older age group, and that's the C18-2 octadecadienyl carnitine that wasn't significantly different between the different age groups. But then for the other 12 acyl carnitines, we can see that each was significantly higher in the 97-year-olds when compared with the 67-year-olds, and that's because we can see that the p-value and false discovery rate are both less than 0.05. So that's a potentially important finding because the having the, the uh, acyl carnitines that were associated with having a major cardiovascular event associated with Alzheimer's disease or higher in Alzheimer's disease and or all-cause mortality, those acyl carnitines also increase during aging. So with that in mind, can we track and potentially optimize levels of these acyl carnitines? So acyl carnitines can be tracked using an at-home metabolomic kit. And if you're familiar with the channel, you've seen me talk about this kit in many videos so far. I've used it to uh, measure levels of taurine and polyamines, which increase lifespan in rodents. It includes kynurenine and tryptophan as markers of the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, EPA and DHA, the fish oil fatty acids, which decline during aging and lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, CEs or cholesterol esters, which are associated with epigenetic age. It includes metabolites related to oxidative stress. And now in this video, acyl carnitines, and it includes 38 acyl carnitines. So beyond just the, the, the metabolites that I've listed there that I have videos on the channel, and I'll put some of those in the right corner, this kit includes more than 600 metabolites, so I've got more videos uh, coming to go through almost all of them. And if you're interested in using, your, uh, using it yourself, that link will be in the video's description, or a discount link will be in the video's description. All right, so what's my data? So putting up the 14 acyl carnitines, which is what we can see on the left, I have data so far for three tests, and I'm waiting on results for test number four which then brings us to what's optimal. Well, when considering that these acyl carnitines increase during aging and relatively higher levels are associated with an increased risk for having a major cardiovascular event 
are, are higher in Alzheimer's disease or are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, I think it makes the most sense to of, try to avoid an age-related increase for these acylcarnitines. All acylcarnitines are not the same for how they change during aging or for their potential effects on health. I'll also have that in upcoming videos, so stay tuned. So in terms of how I'm doing, I'm taking the sum of these acylcarnitines. And once I get to five tests, I'm going to include them in my big picture biomarker list, which includes the standard chem panel, and then start to look at correlations with diet with the goal of keeping them towards the low end of my range. So how am I doing so far with that? And it's only three tests so far, so I wouldn't take this data very seriously as I don't know if my dietary and supplement interventions uh, or just normal test to, set, test to test variability is what's impacting these data. But for the first test, that was my best test so far based on keeping them relatively low at 15.2 micromolar as the sum. But then for the next two tests, they were a little bit higher, 17 and 18.8 micromolar. So again, the goal is to keep these relatively low. For the last two tests, they went in the wrong direction. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NED quantification, green tea, epigenetic and telomere testing, or microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, which includes APOB, that's not included in the IOLO kit, so they're complementary tests, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand as shown here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.